Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back from beautiful Italy, uh, where we are going to stay for the next month. I hope you like the new background. I don't know if you can hear the chicken in the background, but we're in the middle of a farm, so we just um, have a chicken visitor who just randomly came into our small terrace section. Anyways, I hope you don't mind. Also, like all of the background noises, I hope you're okay with that. We're going to tackle a Halloween project that you actually wanted me to make. A couple of people on Instagram told me like, hey, what do you think about doing this project or like an inspired outfit by that character? And I was like, hmm, that looks intriguing. So let's do that. And the character that I'm talking about is Morticia Adams from the Adams Family. I know the name of the show, but I've never seen it before. So I had to do a bunch of research on how the character looks like and the outfit and so on and so forth. So with that said, I also wanted to mention that I'm not gonna do a complete remake of the character's dress or dresses, like one of the dresses, but I'm going to do an inspired look by that. So. I hope that's okay with you. I'm going to have a lot of fun creating this look. So let's just jump right into the video. So as mentioned in my intro already, I had to do a bunch of research, but then just sat down and started drawing, started sketching. I ended up with a few elements from the uh, like most famous dress, I guess. I'm not quite sure on that, but um, I didn't really like how costumey it looked. I had this corset drawn in, but I also didn't really like how it looked. So I went ahead and made another sketch with a bunch of like darts in the center front and in the back pieces, because I just had a feeling that that would look really, really intriguing. So I went ahead and did that with like the color that I saw in one of the pictures and the whole fit and flare silhouette that she has. And I used my bodice block to create this pattern, but then also used my cocktail dress Ramona for the darts in the front because it already has a nicely fitted bodice. So I used that as a reference and just went ahead and like did my whole pattern making thing. Okay, so this is my first mock-up right here. And as you can see, it already looks quite promising, but there are a few things that I want to change. First of all, I have to put my microphone out of the way because I want to change where the neckline is gonna sit. And I want it to be a deep neckline. So somewhere here, maybe. Maybe like that. And then we're gonna have something like that. And we're gonna pull it all the way down there. So another thing that I don't like, as you can see, it solves the issues of the wrinkling over there. Let's just look at that one because the microphone is over here. As you can see that. I also want to relocate the shoulder to around here. 
just sits nicer. Then I'm also going to heighten it a tiny bit and also take it out a bit as I want to add shoulder, shoulder pads. But other than that, I really like how all of the darts look. This is the back. It has an opening there as well, which also looks actually quite good. I wanted to do a lace up, but I'm not really sure if I want to do that with how the back looks at the moment. So I'm pretty happy about that. And then we need to solve the sleeve, sleeve issue. So I had it sewn together right here, but it broke <laughs> because it's too tight. So what we're just going to do is just extend this little curve here. We're gonna have a loop and a button there. So this should be fine. Or like we're gonna have something to tie there. Not sure yet as I'm not fully stocked obviously. So I might have to resolve to something like tying a knot or something, but that's it. We're going to leave the bodice and everything as it is because I quite like it. So let's do another mock-up. Okay, this is fitting number two. I did all of the alterations that I showed you in fitting number one and it honestly looks super nice. I don't think that I want to change anything at all. I like how the neckline sits. I like the shape of this collar down here. This all change due to me opening it up right here at the shoulder so it's not tucking anymore and it looks really really nice i added the shoulder pads i think they make a really really nice square kind of look super elegant and the sleeves are also working out so they are not too tight they're not too loose i'm going to add chiffon underneath this i don't think that i will be doing this puffing out kind of renaissance style sleeve but more like just a layer that's gonna sit right there i want to try something out with the chiffon but i don't know yet so let's let's see how that works in the final piece i'm going to add lining and boning so this is gonna sit like a corset kind of uh, thing I'm going to have a skirt obviously on this so this is just going to be a tight skirt I'm not sure yet if I actually want to do the fit and flare uh, floor length style just because it's a lot and I feel like I can also wear this to other occasions like it's it's a bit costumey but it's not too much you know what I mean so like if I add the skirt that I drew in my sketch obviously it's you can't wear it anymore. So I'm trying to like kind of tone it down to something cute, wearable, but also okay for Halloween. So you can choose to make this dress for your Halloween costume, but then not just let it sit in your wardrobe, but also use it for other occasions, which I think is a good thing. So I'm thinking about just doing a mini skirt, you know, just uh, fit it to the body and call it a day. Maybe do a slit here in the side. That's all that I know at the moment. The top looks great. I can leave it as is and I can start the real thing. So let's do that. Okay, so I'm now finally done with preparation and we can start sewing. I uh, will be uh, showing you what I'm doing step by step, obviously, but I'm also like kind of gonna switch around between voiceover and live voice, I guess. So don't be confused by that. So let's start. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually prepare the collars because I feel like 
that's something that we can do in the very beginning. We're going to take our outer collar, the one that's a bit bigger than the facing, and we're gonna iron up the one centimeter seam allowance at the bottom that's gonna be sewn onto the neckline on front and back, just into the piece. And then we can take the facings and put right sides together with the outer collar and then stitch from right here where the fold line is. So from right here, one centimeter in from the bottom and the side all the way over to the other side and actually not until this fold line, but you're gonna turn here and find the notch right here. This marks where the back cutout sits. So we're gonna stitch it right until here into the fold line. And now that we have this done, we're going to cut away the corners as per usual. And I'm also going to cut down the seam allowance to three millimeters. And now we can go ahead and turn this over like that. And now I'm going to turn the facing side upwards and iron this. Before we do that, let me just quickly cut into the notch here towards the stitching line in order to get out the seam allowance here. Now I'm going to iron this so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the facing side also as per usual. So just like that. Obviously for the other piece I'm gonna do the same thing. So we are gonna end up having two of these. Okay, let's continue with the front piece and let's close all of the darts. I already put them on my piece right here as you can see. So I am just going to, hmm, I put them on the wrong side. I put them on the right side of the fabric, but I should have put them on the wrong side of the fabric onto the interfacing. So I'm quickly going to do that again. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. I put the lines on the wrong side of the fabric. So what I will be doing now is to just put the two legs of the darts on top and stitch these. Now that the darts are done, we're going to iron them towards the side seam right there. So as you can see, the white lines are gone. So like that, and I'm gonna repeat that for the other one. Let's also quickly close the darts of the back piece. And that is what they look like. We're also gonna iron the darts towards the side seam like that and then we can put the shoulder seams together so we're just going to put right sides of front and back together and close the shoulder seam right there okay i'm super sorry about the back quality of, of my drop down camera i think i fixed it now it, it was just the wrong setting and i was filming yesterday at night so not gonna do that anymore, but I hope everything was still clear as I didn't do too much and didn't go into that much detail. So let's continue with our pattern right here and close all the darts of the rest of the pieces. So I have all of my lining fabric and then also the skirt in lining and outer fabric. So let's close all of the darts. So everything is prepared now. All of the darts are closed in lining and out of fabric. And I have my out of fabric front skirt right here. And I'm going to quickly close the center front seam right there and then iron it open. And I think I'm going to put the bodice, the front bodice, right on top here because I want to add boning to the dart placements which will go from the bodice into the skirt as well. So we need this to be together. 
And I just see that the front pieces are not put together yet, so we can also quickly do that right sides together and then just close all the way up to here. And now we can put these two pieces together, so right sides together like that and close this seam, the waist seam, but making sure while doing that to match up all of the darts, they should perfectly match up and that they also face the right direction, so always towards the side seam. Let's iron the seam allowance into the skirt. And now I want to add the boning and I think I'm just going to follow the lengths of the darts and just cut boning to that size and probably just stitch them on. So next up, I was thinking a bit how to continue because I am basically done with the bodice of the dress, uh, apart from the sleeves and the collar, but both of that, we need the lining to be put in the dress already. So that is what we're going to continue with. Since the front pieces lay on fold for the lining, it's pretty easy to just put these together, just putting right sides together and closing the waistline right here. And then we're going to do exactly the same for the uh, back pieces as well, closing the waist seam. And we can also put the shoulder seams together just as we did for the front piece to finally then put lining and out of fashion fabric together. So let's put the two layers together. We're gonna take our lining and put right sides together with our out of fabric. And there's actually just three seams that we want to do. So right here in the center front, the neckline, we're going to sew together with our outer fabric from the notch right here, where we cut into the piece at the corner over to the other side. And then in the back piece, without twisting anything up here, we're going to close the back cutout as well. So just from here all the way up to the neckline and on the other side as well. Now we have to clip into the seams and I'm probably also going to just cut away the seam allowance as that's just gonna be difficult to turn over with that still attached. And here in the center front, we probably have to like take out a whole bunch of seam allowance in order to turn this around nicely. This is probably fine, I'm just going to cut into where the curve is into the seam allowance towards the stitching line so it can lay openly and it's not gonna wrinkle up. And then we can turn this right sides out. So right here it works nicely apparently. This up here is usually the point where it doesn't want to lay nicely if you don't cut enough away basically but it seems to work out. Let's iron this so that the ditch of the seam is only visible on the wrong side of the fabric, or like on the lining side. And let's do the same for the back cutout. We can also cut into the seam allowance here to take it out as we need that for later on. So I'm just going to find the center back and cut towards the stitching line on both the lining and the outer fabric.
let's do the sleeves. So uh, they look funny, <laughs> as you can see right there, but there is up here at the shoulder area a small seam that we have to close first. So we're just going to take our two pieces put right sides together and then close this small section up here. Let's iron this open and I think I want to try out something with like a chiffon underlayer here. Okay, so I am done with trying out. <laughs> this is the sleeve that I came up with. It has this chiffon inner layer right there that I want to add in and we're going to do that right now. So this is the other sleeve already done and let's do the other one. So the first thing that I did was just laying it flat out in front of me and then clip into the seam allowance because we have a lot of round corners right there. So I want to make sure that this lays flat when I am ironing the seam allowance into the piece. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then we also have to clip into the seam up here. I have a notch until where I have to sew, but I sewed over it. But now I'm going to cut into the seam until the notch. And I can start folding over the seam allowance. And let's quickly repeat that for the other side like that. And then I have just a scrap piece of chiffon right here. And first of all, I'm going to just quickly lay the uh, cut out here so that they overlap here for the uh, second one as well. And just try to flatten that area with my iron like that. And now I can put my chiffon over top and pin it in place. I am first putting like pins in at the overlap because then it's secure and it's not gonna wiggle around. And then I'm quickly going to show you the middle one because the middle one is where the elbow sits. So I want to like shove a tiny bit of fullness of the chiffon into the hole there so that once we use, like once we wear the dress, you can also bend your, your arm. So we have a tiny bit more chiffon in here and the rest I'm just going to pin flat on top of the areas like this. And for the bottom here, quickly just going to turn this around, I'm going to add some sort of string so that I can have a bow tie there. So I'm going to go one centimeter from the hem above and put this in there and just add a pin and same to the other side. And that lays in between the chiffon and the outer layer, like that. And now I'm going to top stitch very closely to the edge all around this thing from top to bottom. And the rest of the chiffon can be cut down to, let's say about one and a half centimeter seam allowance. You can finish the edge however you like, as I don't really have anything to do that here with me. I'm just gonna leave it raw and probably just fix it once I am home. And the hem here, I'm just going to cut off so that it is at the same height as the outer fabric. Since my chiffon has synthetic material inside, I can simply melt the edges and it won't fray. So that's what I am doing for hemming. And the sleeve is done. To put the sleeves in place, we're actually only gonna use the outer layer. So you're just quickly going to put the lining out of the way and since the side seam right here is not yet closed, this is super easy to put in. Just make sure that you grab the correct sleeve. You can see that with the notches, the one that has a smaller distance towards the side seam is the front notch. So make sure to match those up. And then you just want to match up the sleeve with the sleeve cutout as per usual. Thank you. 
So in order to get a crisp shoulder, I went ahead and pinned the neckline where we're going to attach the collar to together. So lining and outer fabric is now one layer. And now we're going to iron the seam allowance of our sleeve or like our shoulder seam into the sleeve as per usual. I'm using my tailor's ham for that as it works pretty nicely with this. Let's do it the other way around first to, you know, have it already pre-ironed into the sleeve. And now I can turn this around and hopefully now from the outside with everything facing into the sleeve, iron it nicely. I don't know if you can see that with the black, black on black, but the seam now lays nicely. And I'm just going to continue with the rest of the sleeve, just ironing the whole seam allowance into the sleeve. Okay, and now, this is going to be a bit complicated, but we're gonna take the lining and just fold it to the side. And we're gonna grab our shoulder pad, figure out which side is the front. There should be notches in here. And as you can see, one side is bigger than the other. This side is smaller. So this is the front. So I grabbed the correct one. And then I'm just going to find my shoulder point and match it up with the notch in the shoulder pad, which is right here. And I'm going to have the shoulder pad lay one centimeter into the sleeve just to make a really nice puff and turn everything to the right side while still grabbing onto the shoulder pad like that. I'm going to put a pin in there so that it stays in place. And then I'm going to work my way down to both sides from the outside, like kind of feeling where the pad sits. You can always see it from how it folds basically and where the seam is and so on. And then just pin the shoulder pad in place while always curving it like the dress, how it's going to end up being curved. So always like the shoulder curve because that alters the way the shoulder pad sits and I also want to have a straight line here I'm going to just manipulate the placement until I like it and for the inside right here we're gonna match up the shoulder pad with the seam allowance and just stitch it together Make sure to just stitch right on the seam allowance. So the shoulders are done and prepared. I also made sure to iron everything nicely again. And it looks like there are only so many things left. One of them being the uh, armhole of the lining we're going to overlock this because this is going to sit like raw basically you're going to see it on the inside so we're quickly going to do that and now we can go ahead and close the full length of the side seam but separately so lining and outer fabric separately and then we're going to have a nice and neat finish on the inside so good for me as i didn't bring my overlock so <laughs> i don't have to deal with raw seams or any other kinds of seams that might not look too pretty not talking about something specific um yeah, whatever. So in the side seam right here, I wanted to do a slit. So for that, I'm gonna find my notch that marks the beginning of the slit and only sew the side seam shut until there. Everything else just gets matched up all the way down into the sleeve. And we're gonna repeat this three more times. So the other fashion fabric layer and then two times for the lining side seams. And then we should have like a nice inside. Before we turn everything right sides out, let's iron the seams. Otherwise, we're not gonna have as easy of an access to it as now. So for down here, I'm going to iron the seam allowance open as we have the slit in here and 
that needs the seam allowances to be to that side. And that's it already for today's video. I hope you liked this video. It's like a bit different to what you're used to from my channel, I guess, but I had so much fun creating this. If you haven't already, go ahead and click the subscribe button down below and ring the bell so you'll get notified every time that I post. I post on Sundays, so you can keep an eye out for that. And in the meantime, if you're interested in like little tips and tricks, you can check out my Instagram and give me a follow there as that is all that I'm doing there. And all of my other social medias also have the same handle as here on my YouTube. Links are down in the description below. The most direct way to support me and keep videos just like this one coming is just checking out my Etsy store and maybe you're gonna find one or two patterns that you're interested in that will help me out very, very much. So thank you so much for watching and I'm gonna see you next Sunday. Bye guys.